His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a letter to the Chairman of the Committee on the Exercise of the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People, Mr Fordi Sek, in which His Majesty expressed thanks and sincere appreciation for the efforts and the immense role of Mr Fordi Sek in defence of the legitimate rights of the brotherly Palestinian people and empowering them to exercise their inalienable rights as well as promoting international awareness to achieve these noble goals. His Majesty said that this annual celebration, which we commemorate in solidarity with the Palestinian people, is an occasion to remind everyone of the responsibility of the United Nations and the international community as a whole towards the Palestinian people and the need to seek a solution to their just cause, especially as their suffering has reached an unprecedented level that requires to stand by their side in the long-standing ordeal and accelerate the international community's efforts to assume their responsibilities in this regard. God. His Majesty added that many illegal and inhuman violations being committed by the Israeli occupation authorities against the Palestinian people will only lead to further aggravation of the conflict, loss of time, foreshadowing grave repercussions and hinders the achievement of peace. Israel is continuing with its violations in defiance of international laws and ongoing illegitimate policies regarding illegal demolition of houses, arresting of innocent citizens, destruction and depletion of the Palestinians' wealth and construction of further settlements on the occupied territories. This is in addition to its aggression of the sanctity of the Al-Aqsa Mosque, assaults on the holy sites at the hands of extremist groups and the excavation works being carried out by Israeli authorities around the mosque would lead up to a major disaster at one of the most important Islamic holy sites. The holy site to which the hearts of Muslims from all around the world are attached as it is considered to be the first Qibla, the third holiest mosque, and the place of Ezra and Miraj. His Majesty reiterated Bahrain's firm stance in support of the Palestinian cause to achieve the hopes and aspirations of the honourable Palestinian people through a just, comprehensive and lasting peace. The establishment of an independent Palestinian state on the borders of June 1967 with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with the relevant international resolutions and the Arab Peace Initiative. These resolutions bear witness to the justice of the Palestinian cause and will compel the international organizations, particularly the Committee on the Exercise of Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People, the CEIRPP, to exert further efforts for their implementation. His Majesty assured Mr. Fodi Sek that the Kingdom of Bahrain will continue its efforts in all paths and in cooperation with brothers and friends to reach these goals and fulfill the aspirations of all for peaceful existence and peace. His Majesty also expressed his full support for all the tangible efforts made by the Palestinian National Authority under the leadership of His Excellency President Mahmoud Abbas, the President of the State of Palestine, and for his hard work towards the promotion of the existence of a Palestinian state and its entities at international forums, as Palestine became a member of the International Criminal Court and has raised its flag on the headquarters of the United Nations as an observer state. These historic accomplishments confirm that the achievement of justice and independence is possible, but it still needs more concerted efforts from the parts of the international community to protect the Palestinians, be fair, firmly stand by their side, and compel the Israeli authorities to put a time limit for the end of the occupation of the Palestinian territories. All this should take place in implementation of the United Nations resolutions and the international quartet's initiatives that seek a peaceful settlement for the Palestinian cause, halt the inhuman Israeli practices that are inconsistent with the United Nations Charter, the principles of the international law, and the Fourth Geneva Convention of 1949, which are the same practices that represent a flagrant violation of the rights of the Palestinians and a catalyst for the hatred that pushes further escalation and increasing reactions. His Majesty wished Mr Fodi Sek and the Esteemed Committee success and reiterated his full support of the commendable efforts supporting the Palestinian cause. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Gudabia Palace today His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. 
The Royal Highness has commended the interest of His Majesty the King to reinforce relations between Bahrain and the world in various fields. They said regional and international developments in the security and economic fields require enhancing cooperation to avoid any repercussions. Discussing national issues, their Royal Highnesses confirmed the necessity for ministries and government authorities to be ready to deal with any developments and challenges that may affect their performance. They highlighted the importance of ensuring the people are the number one priority of the development process and governmental efforts. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudebia Palace today the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Speaker Ahmed Al Mullah, Shura Council Speaker Ali Al Salah, and a number of MPs in the presence of former Representative Speaker Khalifa Al Dahrani and several senior state officials. The Prime Minister reviewed with the audience national issues during which he commended the continuous development under the leadership of His Majesty the King. He said all officials must be capable to implement the government's strategy and devote his efforts to serve the people. He discussed with the audience several issues related to government services during which he confirmed that directives are clear to ministries and relevant bodies to continue developing services projects across Bahrain. His Royal Highness stressed that economic challenges require dedication and devotion to overcome them and strengthen the national economy through looking for alternatives that will push progress forward so as to achieve propriety of the country and its people. The Prime Minister asserted that Bahrain has made numerous accomplishments in serving the people, highlighting that the government's vision has founded a solid infrastructure for cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities.
Israel Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudabia Palace Arab ambassadors to Bahrain, led by Kuwait's ambassador to the kingdom and Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Sheikh Azam Mubarak Al Subah. The audience congratulated His Royal Highness on his birthday and wished him continued health and success to push forward the development process of Bahrain. The Prime Minister expressed pride in the noble brotherly sentiments of the friendly countries towards His Royal Highness and assigned Gulf and Arab ambassadors to convey his greetings to their leaders and Prime Ministers. With regards to regional and international developments, His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of facing the increasing security and economic challenges which are threatening the stability of Arab countries and are hindering their development efforts. He said the region is going through a dangerous and critical phase of its modern history and that there are certain powers that seek to spread chaos in Arab countries. He praised the awareness of the people that can stop such evil attempts. The Prime Minister went on to call for unity amongst Arab countries to force their presence on the global map. He also asserted the need to adopt a unified Arab vision reinforced by strategic cooperation to combat terrorism and stop its funding. His Royal Highness highlighted the necessity of increasing official meetings amongst Arab countries to unify stances and coordination in dealing with regional challenges. The Prime Minister commended the role of Arab ambassadors to Bahrain in consolidating cooperation between Bahrain and their countries in all fields, wishing them success in performing their diplomatic duties. For their part, the audiences expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's care to reinforce Arab cooperation and partnership in all fields. They lauded his wisdom in dealing with many situations and challenges, stressing that the current stage requires further Arab joint action that will reinforce the efforts of Arab countries in the development field. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired today the regular cabinet meeting at Gudabia Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. 
The Cabinet welcomed the recent meeting between His Majesty King Hamid and Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain, which reflects the strength of bilateral ties between the two countries. The Cabinet praised the success of the Arab Petroleum Investments Cooperation, the API Corp, forum which uh, was held recently in Bahrain under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, which saw international participation by over 400 officials, professionals and experts from the oil and gas sectors. The Prime Minister emphasised the importance of facilitating procedures related to municipal licences and directed the Ministerial Committee for Services and Infrastructure to finalise their report related to this issue and submit their recommendations to the Cabinet. Finally, His Royal Highness directed the Ministry of Works, Municipalities and Urban Planning and other government authorities to take the necessary measures in anticipation of adverse weather conditions. A number of memorandums submitted by ministries and ministerial committees were also discussed during this week's Cabinet meeting. The Cabinet approved a memorandum regarding the collection of costs associated with building and developing infrastructure in construction sites. It also approved a memorandum regarding a draft law to ratify the Arab Convention on Combating Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing. The ratification of the Convention is a commitment to the Security Council resolutions to criminalise the financing of terrorism and enhance Arab collaboration in this field. It also agreed on a memorandum regarding the request to register a regional office for the Confederation of Indian Industry in Bahrain. The Cabinet took note of a memorandum on tenders that have been settled or issued by the Ministry of Works, Municipalities and Urban Planning during the third quarter of 2015. The meeting approved a memorandum regarding the final approval of an aviation agreement between Bahraini and Hungarian governments to be signed on the sidelines of the fourth Bahrain International Air Show in January 2016. It also took note of a number of draft proposals by the Legislative Authority. After the Cabinet meeting, Minister of Information Affairs and Shura and Representative Councils Affairs Issa Al Hamadi held a press conference to outline what has been discussed during the meeting. The Minister confirmed the government's policy is clear regarding directing subsidies to the citizens. He also highlighted the goals of the Regional Office for the Confederation of Indian Industry in Bahrain to create commercial and industrial bonds between Indian and GCC countries. In regards to the report issued by Human Rights Watch, the Minister said the report was one-sided, confirming that the Kingdom of Bahrain has established an independent constitutional institution tasked to preserve human rights. He added that any maltreatment will be seriously looked into and confirmed that Bahrain's policy is clear in dealing and cooperating with legal institutions. Minister Al Hamadi outlined that the government task forces are dealing with internal expenses of the government and do not have an impact on citizen oriented services. The Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa Mixed Martial Arts KHK MMA team has won the bronze medallion in Wolverhampton University in Britain, organised by the IMMAF in collaboration with the UK MMAF and in partnership with the Ultimate Fighting Championship. On the occasion, the first deputy of the chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid, honoured the winner, Hussein Ayad, during the closing ceremony of the championship. He highlighted that the achievement is all thanks to His Majesty the King's continuous support to the field of sports in Bahrain. He also praised the leadership support in the youth and sports movements, especially regarding mixed martial arts, in order to achieve further progress in the field of sports in the kingdom. His Highness Sheikh Khalid said that this achievement is confirming the plan to reach higher levels, improve the abilities of the fighters and achieve positive results. He added that the bronze medal is considered as a significant addition to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness said that Bahrain's participation in international championships affirms Bahrain's position internationally and affirms the capabilities of Bahrainis. He added that he was delighted by the level of the fighters during the championship and that he will provide all the facilities and requirements needed for the continuation of this sport. 
He appreciated the fighters and administrative and technical staff's efforts for contributing to this achievement, wishing them further success. Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the LMRA CEO Osama bin Abdullah Al Abbasi, held a press conference today in the attendance of a number of media personnel. The LMRA announced the launch of the second edition of Bahrain's annual award for community awareness under the title Respect Others, held in cooperation between the authority and Zain Mobile Telecommunications Company. Al Absi expressed his hope that participation of the award would include Bahraini nationals in addition to GCC nationals and residents between the age of 16 to 26. The government is taking important steps to effectively deal with the repercussions of the oil prices drop and their impact on the national economy. These steps are aimed to preserve the sustainability of development gains and maintain the steadiness of the services provided to citizens. Therefore, the Executive Committee has formed six government task forces there to minimise recurring expenses. More in this report. The government of the Kingdom of Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, has worked on several steps to effectively deal with the consequences of oil prices drop in order to preserve the sustainable development gains and the quality of services provided to citizens. These steps come in line with the government's vision for the coming stage to deal with the economic challenges and meet the demands of the current international financial situation and strengthen the economic structure. In this regard, the government started with itself by taking significant procedures to reduce expenses and implement sustainable policies to ensure the best interests of the homeland and the people. During the meeting of the Executive Committee, which was held in October, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the committee decided to establish six government task forces to review and identify areas where government expenditure can be reduced and provide regular updates on their progress. The areas that the task forces would review included maintenance of government buildings, travel expenses and transportation, property rental costs, advertisement and administration, IT expenditure, as well as efficient utilization of medications and medical equipment. The government task forces conducted their work and held a number of meetings in which they focused on finding solutions to reduce expenses effectively and preserve the level of services, productivity and efficiency. The government task forces have worked with different government institutions to gather all required information in order to reach best recommendation to reduce recurring expenses. They also formed subcommittees and held workshops to find the possibility of implementing a number of international practices in the same field. By the end of this month, the government task forces will put forward main recommendations and suggestions that include ways of reducing expenses. This comes in line with the government's continuous work to enhance efficiency and effectiveness of its bodies and institutions without adversely affecting the citizens' living standards, especially during the current global financial status.